try. Thanks for being with us, giving us a, uh, the possibility to just uh, recap, uh, have a recap on this uh, conversation that we just heard at uh, University Ventures here in New York. From your perspective, uh, where is university education going to? What is the the trend that you feel is, is uh, visible and uh, what does it uh, mean for the, the mainstream higher education? Yeah, at the core what we believe in North America is there's a trend towards shorter, faster degrees. The traditional four-year degree is something that at second and third tier institutions probably needs to be rethought into a bunch of smaller certificate programs, shorter degree programs that enable a student to get a, a certificate and get started on their career and then that's elongated out over the course of their career. So it's a, instead of having a front-loaded four-year degree or three-year degree, thinking about that degree as a number of certificate three to six-month programs over the course of their career. And that enables them to upskill at, at just in time as they move through their career and know a lot more about what they want to do in life rather than uh, early on when they really don't know exactly uh, where they're going and having this uh, in what, what ends up being a massive cost. You know, in, in North America, the cost is almost $200,000 uh, for a, a student to get that degree. Um, and it's, an, it's a massive debt load at the beginning. And if they don't finish it, and they, or they spend the time in the wrong way, it's a huge risk. So we think it's better for all of them. Again, this is the second and third tier. We believe the top tier institutions are going to continue to be the classic four-year baccalaureate program should be roughly 15 to 20 percent of the population, but we see roughly 60 percent of the population going into higher education today, and we think for that second and third tier, uh, we need to rethink um, the front-loading and think about it in shorter, faster degrees. And uh, you, in the, in the uh, discussion, you said the faculty hasn't understood this call for serving their populations in, in this best way, which maybe includes those shorter, faster yeah. degree programs. Um, uh, what do you think is missing here? Is it? Well, I think, look, I think faculty members uh, recreate at their institution the institution they've come from. And most faculty members happen to go to top tier institutions to get their PhD. And so they're recreating a top tier institution at the second or third tier with a very different segment of the population who has very different future prospects than the students that, you know, that, that, they, uh, that they did themselves, let's say. The other thing is that the, the faculty at the very top, um, or the fac faculty at many, are really focused on their research. Uh, and so research focused kind of direction rather than a teaching focused direction. They're trying to advance the research. Uh, if that's the case, then, then rethinking the university is not necessarily uh, front and center for them. And so that can be a challenge as well. But if you get to these, what, are, what we consider more open enrollment, very, not very selective institutions, um, it, it's important for the faculty to recognize that this is not a top tier institution. And while we have great hopes for the students, and many of those students, I'm not, I'm not denigrating what they can do or what they should be able to do, but the fact of the matter is the economy only really has spots for about 15 to 20 percent of the students at the managerial and upper level. And so we really need to, to right size what we're providing them and the cost in terms of time and money that we're charging them to what their future out, uh, prospects are and get them going toward that, that, that prospect faster. And then if they're succeeding in that career, they can come back and, and get uh, an upskill uh, and get more and move further through their career that way. I have two elements, uh, that, if you allow me. One is um, that I would be very interested. Uh, one is provocative. One could say maybe universities are not those places that uh, are the ones who can do that. Maybe it's mm. other institutions, maybe new ones that come up. Maybe it's uh, completely online. So what do you think is this, how is this ecosystem yeah, in your so, view, uh, constituted? Right, I, I, it's a great point, and you may be right. I mean, we had roughly 2,000 universities in the U.S. in 1960. We have over 4,500 today. Uh, the question really is, 
um, if they're not going to make that adjustment, maybe we need to go back to something closer to 2000, right? Because they're charging students a ton of money and asking for them to spend four or five years when the outcomes uh, are not necessarily there in the same way. And so perhaps uh, there will be other providers who are not universities, in which case we'll see a lot of closures. So that, that's very possibly. I, what I was advocating for is that uh, leaders at those institutions should be thinking more about how to uh, verify the learning that happens, um, quantify it in certain ways, and, and provide uh, indications, credentials, short of a full degree that a student can use, because at least then they have value in the open marketplace that they can take with. And so that is, that, that's part of the, the critique, is to say, these are some changes you need to think about, and if you don't, and you're in that second or third tier, your institution very possibly will be at risk over the next generation. Mm -hmm. This uh, intense reflection is what uh, they may, may uh, should do. Is there anything else, given that uh, we have this German uh, higher ed uh, institution leadership uh, on the tour and at home, what would be your recommendations for them? What else well, I they think, should do? Well, I think two other trend lines that we, we, we think uh, a lot about is the shift to online. We think that that's going to happen. Um, we think terrestrial education and, and, and classroom setting in person is still the best, but due to a lot of economic forces, we think a lot of it will move online. And as you move online, you really need to think about learning verification and authentication in a way that's much more sophisticated than probably most are thinking about it today to make sure the student of record's actually doing the work and to make sure that they're actually mastering the material um, in a way that might be easier in a classroom. But that learning verification piece probably is not as robust in the terrestrial uh, setting as it, as it should be in the bricks and mortar setting. So across the board, we're advocating for all institutions to think much more about verifying uh, what the student has actually mastered and credentialing that in some way rather than this monolithic kind of transcript. Trans this degree. The transcript's meaningless to most employers. If you break that out and say, this student's actually mastered these skills, that is going to have more value in the marketplace for that student, more value in the marketplace for the employer, and then it shows that the university has actually done the hard work of verifying that the student actually got something for the years and the money they spent, whether it be their own money or in Germany, whether it may, may, may be public sub subsidy that was spent on them. And I think that that is just a healthy accountability that should be there. Well, thanks a lot, uh, Troy. It's a pleasure and I hope to stay in touch. Thank yeah. you. Great.